No. No buzz. A Just Bees book club. Um, today we're going to be talking about The House on the Borderland by William Hope Hodgson. Uh, this is a book I first, I've never actually, you know, I've never read it as a, as a text. I've never held it in my hands. I've never had it on a page, whether physical or digital. Um, it is a book I've listened to twice. Um, once back in like 2012, maybe 2013. And then once again, this last like two weeks ago. Um, and it's a book that has really stuck with me across that decade. Um, it's a, it's a LibriVox recording actually. Um. LibriVox is cool. Uh, if you don't know about LibriVox, um, they uh, it's just like community-made uh, audiobooks of public domain books. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in there. Um, William Hope Hodgson, author. Uh, I'm not gonna try to like guess dates and shit. Um, I ran across this book particularly, I think, because I was just uh, I was at a job where I was like reading a bunch of uh, Lovecraft's short stories for the first time because I was getting into a lot of stuff and and he seemed important this is like around the time of speculative realism if you remember that if you remember that if you remember that have i mentioned that this is just for bees so you should you should at least have like some memory of that because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a bee and, and you're a bee if you're here because it's just for bees uh as probably the speculative realist the object-oriented ontology motherfuckers so i was like going into all that world uh, and so I was reading a bunch of H.P. Lovecraft when I was supposed to be working, um, and uh, I eventually got into audiobooks, and, and Hope Hodgson's book came up in some weird random forum thread or another, uh, and I found it on, on LibriVox, and I listened to it, and I was like, yo, this book fucking goes. This is great. Um, why don't more people talk about this shit? <laughs> um, and the answer is, like, they'd probably do, and it's just not in those circles. Uh, and, uh, it's also, it's a, little, it's a weird little thing. Um, like, that's, like, the comps are probably, like, Olaf Stapledon, um, with, like, um, Star Maker, or, um, The Last and First Man. Um, uh, I feel like Brian Aldiss kind of plays in this similar space in, like, a later period, but I haven't really, like, I haven't even touched an Aldiss book in, like, a long time. Um... There's one other author that I'm sort of thinking of, but I, I can't pull it quite at the moment. Um, but yeah, William Hope Hodgson, House on the Borderlands. It's uh, There's like a frame narrative where uh, it's like Hodgson has recovered, or Hodgson finds a book that is a like a re recovery of two men who were out on a fishing trip out in the in like Gaelic country, and they stumble across a weird little space uh that has like this weird house that's all dilapidated and it's out on just like this fucking promontory that's like overhanging a cliff and there's like a weird little grotto nearby and in that in that dilapidated house they find a diary so it's like a you know two two step remove um but the the, the diary that they found makes up the bulk of the story um and the story itself is, it's, like I said, I, I got through this through early weird fiction, or through, through like, the history of, of Lovecraft's influences. So it's, like, a, a precursor to weird fiction. Um, uh, I also went on a brief M.R. James kick recently, and it's just, just fantastic. Uh, love, love those ghost stories. Fantastic ghost stories. Um, this is not so much a ghost story <laughs> as it is... A uh, story about a man who moves into a house for very cheap because there's rumors that Satan built it. And he's like, whatever, I don't give a fuck. Uh, he moves in with his sister, who's basically his housekeeper and his dog. Uh, and he lives there for a while. And then uh, some uh, some monstrosities start appearing. Um, dang. Ooh, give me one second while I pop over to my computer. Uh, uh, I keep, I can't uh, remember what sort of hybrid man. It's a pig man. It's a swine man. Fuck, I did all that pausing to go all the way to the internet. 
only to remember it before I got to the Wikipedia page. Uh, he starts, like, having these moments where he sees, like, a swine man, uh, like, hanging out. And there's, like, multiple swine men. There are men who have, like, pig skin and faces and make pig noises. Um and he his dog gets hurt by one of them and he's like being super vigilant about his house and and making sure that they don't get in when they when they amass and attack he locks his sister in her room despite you know not uh there being no evidence that anyone else is experiencing these things um and then he uh travels to the center of the universe and sees the end of the universe yeah in his house that's important. It's all in his house. Uh, <laughs> I like this book a lot. Uh, it, it like, I remember listening to it the first time and being like, that's, uh, that's cool and weird. And it's cool in a way that Lovecraft is certainly not cool. Which isn't to say that there aren't things that could be very clearly read as uh, hella xenophobic. Um, I have mentioned Gaelic country and swine men, for instance. Um, but it largely works in ways that are um, sort of deeply interior, obviously in a way that uh, Lovecraft characters never get to be because their uh, entire inter interiority is... Uh, is a precursor to them uh, being driven mad, mad, uh, scary. Um, which isn't to say that um, this, the, the narrator is like, is, uh, is cool. Um, there is just an interiority there of like a man who is, uh, is kind of already a paranoid recluse who encounters some really fucked up things and you can... You can sort of, you can sort of make the both logical and emotional leaps that he makes without having, without feeling forced into making either of those things. Um, that I think is like really well done, and just in terms of characterization of this dude, um, I, <laughs> the dude sucks. I should just say that. Like that's, uh, my read at least. Like the dude is fucking an annoying, shitty, like old british gent who like feels entitled to his land and whatever um but that doesn't mean he, that hodgson is is as bad at characterization as lovecraft is which isn't to say lovecraft is bad at everything um lovecraft has, a, has an ear for dialogue that is like if not unparalleled like deeply impressive um despite his 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 very uh uh <laughs> <laughs> extra prose um anyway this is not about lovecraft um just that's just the reason i i came to this initially and so it's like my easiest uh, sort of point of reference um and, and so that that's also like a contrast right to to mr james um the the ghost story writer who who wrote a lot of christmas ghost stories um these characters have basically no interiority at all and that's not the point um so the the um the other thing I was thinking of was Fritz Lieber's The Big Time, and that's just because I listened to it around the same time, um, and it's also a LibriVox recording, and I, and I keep meaning to go back to that one as well. Um, but it's also an interstellar, weird fiction sort of thing. Um, yeah, I did. I mean, I'm not doing a great job explaining why this is one of my favorite books of all time, um, which I think is, is a, me doing a great job <laughs> explaining why this is one of my favorite books of all time. There's just like so much shit in here that I'm like, yeah, and then this thing, and then this thing, and then this thing, and then this thing, and then this thing. Uh, and, like, I just love so much of this weird little book. Um, and I wish I wasn't hypersensitive to people breathing into their microphones, because uh, that happens a lot in, in at least a couple parts of this recording, and it made me very sad. Um, I should probably just, like, <laughs> find a copy of this book at some point and actually read it and see if that, like, completely ruins it for me or, or enhances it or whatever. Um but yeah, highly recommend The House on the Borderland by William Hope Hodgson. But only for bees, because this is a Just Bees book club. Thank you for not watching. Fuck. <laughs>